Completely loaded up on his offense. Inside Pizza Hut Stadium, we are good to go. Let's Madden. And the Broncos getting the ball first. Turbo Jeff will start around his 20-yard line. And he'll use the Raiders against the Raiders. And it's kind of done what Volterax has done as Cardinals club champion, right? Load up at receiver with a bunch of 10-cap nobody. Spend your cap on run game and defense. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what Voltrax does, you know, because like I said, a lot of players did switch up their scheme and, and bring out a quarterback instead of instead of having that 10-cap offense everywhere. But Turbo Jeff, he likes that scheme. He doesn't think he was passing the ball very effectively, so he, he goes to that 10-cap quarterback. He actually has a 16-cap quarterback, but that's only so he can put Sprinter on him. You see both players with the Dolphins' defense and a Turbo Jeff. Up against a guy who almost pitched a shutout in the club championship. Jay scored on a fourth and two with 20 seconds left to bust that up for Pavin. It'll be Andrew Luck and Drew Brees as the two quarterbacks in this one, by the way, as they're setting everything up. So if Turbo Jeff gets off to that quick start, would that surprise you? I mean, this is a guy that's looking, obviously, to plant his flag right away. He's going to be having a really slow-paced offense, so it would surprise me if he just was able to strike extremely fast just because of this offense that he's going to be running. He's looking to just get three to four yards to carry and kind of grind out these drives with Chris Johnson. Look at him. He's already going to the two clock. He's going to make this game as short as possible. Doesn't want Pavin to have a bunch of drives because Pavin is one of the best offensive players. Got three right there. Turbo Jeff swapped out Bo Jackson from last week here in Redwood City to go with CJ instead this week. And you're right about just rolling that clock here. Could be a, a one-possession quarter, right, if everything goes well for Turbo Jeff. If everything goes well for Turbo Jeff, then yes. I think each player will have one possession in this first half. Bumper car is going forward here for Chris Johnson, close to the first down. And you look at the receivers here. It's like it's like you go into to Walmart and, and rifle through the DVD bin. Yeah, I mean, it's James O'Shaughnessy and Andrew or uh, Andre Holmes. It's Vance McDonald. Lee Smith at tight end, so that's not where he's spending his cap. Yeah, he's not going to be able to hit him over the top with any pass plays. He has to run the ball. These guys will not be able to beat anybody over the top, so you're going to have to run the ball and see if it can be effective. It's a third and one. You saw Shazier stemming around defensively for Pavin. Just underway at Pizza Hut Stadium. And the quick hitter, Johnson's blown up. All right, so now what? On a fourth and two, you're throwing 30. You got to get this thing flying, right? See, he can't. He's got to run the ball here, and that's where it makes it tough. You know, I would almost consider punting because you are no threat to throw the ball right here. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting decision right away, and he is going to go, wow, on fourth and two from his own 30. Oh, you Shazir is a fullback, and that helps. He's got the first down. And I'm not real sure what Pavin was doing right there. It looked like he was in the perfect run defense to play before. I really don't understand why he went to that. Almost it was like he was just relaxed on defense. He, he just left everybody in their place and played on that safety, kind of playing a bend, don't break defense. When you're at fourth and two, you want to get off the field right there because the game's almost over. Turbo Jeff isn't able to pass the ball. So if you get him down early, he's not going to be able to strike back fast. You know, the dirty little secret about Pavin defensively, he allows more than 100 yards on the ground per game on average. That's worst of the 32 players who came into this tournament. But in the Raiders Club Championship game against Jay, he was terrific. Just drilling Bo Jackson in the backfield time after time. He's got some space. Yep, Johnson will stretch. Johnson will go. He'll get to the 30-yard line Ooh. and dance his way free. Chris Johnson, touchdown! Great stick work, stick work right there by Turbo Jeff. Looked like he was going to have some big yardage, but then he makes the defender miss. A little bit poor, questionable stick work by Pavin right there. Looked like he could have just made that tackle if he would have just tapped A because he has that suction tackle where if you have that secure tackler, you're able to make tackles from a distance. Looked like he kind of went too aggressive right there, and that's why Turbo Jeff sliced him and diced him. In that club championship game we mentioned for Pavin, he allowed negative five yards rushing on the first six carries from Bo Jackson. But you just saw Chris Johnson pop one to make it 7-zip. And this is where it gets interesting. It's going to be really difficult to move the ball versus this defense. Turbo Jeff is going to have 90 overalls almost at every position. This is going to be really difficult for Pavan to just steadily move the ball up and down the field. Pavan only 19 years old. The average age of the AFC West champions is 21. Pavan born on the 4th of July in the year 2000. Yuba City, California native. The beautiful Feather River Valley. Shout out to the 5-3-0. Up by Redding and Chico and Sacramento. 
And Pavin's a big-time Raider fan, Mo. He is gaming with a heavy heart. His beloved Oakland Raiders have played their last game in Oakland. Yeah, Pavin actually started off with his, his uh, alias was Khalil Mack, but then when Khalil Mack got traded, he's like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to be Pavin, you know, <laughs> actually kind of a funny story. I remember when he was real young, like 14 or 15 years old in the Twitch chats, you know, playing playing games versus some of the best players being 14 years old with the gamertag Khalil Mack. And he's all in now, too. No day job. This is it. I mean, he's starting up Twitch and YouTube channels. He wants to be the next full-blown eSports star. He has burned the ships <laughs> like Hernan Cortez and setting sail here in this universe. Down 7 nothing. And he runs with Pollard, who gets smoked in the backfield. I wouldn't try running sweep versus this defense that Terrible Jeff has out there. Even if it was a, a good look, his guys are going to block. His players are just so much better than those offensive linemen. He's going to get off the block every single time. We talked about cheap options at receiver for Turbo Jeff. It's cheap options at running back for Pavin because he's looking to load up. He's got Harrison, who sits down just past the 20-yard line. Only a three-yard gain. See, that three-yard gain probably would have been seven or eight versus a, a normal defense. But like I said, Turbo Jeff has spent all of his cap on the defensive side of the ball. So those players have much higher zone than we're used to seeing, much faster. His guys are going to be able to get out there and make those plays. If you're popping, you've got to take it one play at a time. You're not going to be able to have very many big plays versus this defense. Turbo Jeff blitzes a ton. In fact, about 75% of the time, more than anyone still alive in this major. You expecting that here third and eight? I think we're going to see him probably send about four players and hope that the, his coverage holds up. That's what we're looking Touchdown. at. Oh! No, underneath instead. And a wipeout tackle. You saw something downfield. Pavin just missed a wide open touchdown. That could cost him the game. On fourth and seven. And it's still just the first quarter. But yeah, you got to take that deep strike when you got it. He had it, didn't use it. Underneath here, he will find Dickerson. If you're Pavin, you just can't miss those reads. He had his outside solo receiver on a streak. He was completely unguarded. I don't know what happened with Turbo Jeff. It looked like a little lapse in coverage, but Pavin missed him and ends up converting the fourth down, but that was seven points directly taken off the board. And by the way, that is Garrett Dickerson, not Eric Dickerson. Eric Dickerson, a very popular running back pickup here, but not for Pavin. He will stay with Pollard, who will angle. And a squirm close to the 40-yard line. It's going to bring up a second down and five. I'm not sure how often Pavin wants to go to Garrett Dickerson on fourth down. He's just not <laughs> going to be able to come down with those catches very often. Luckily for Pavin, he was wide open. No one around him, so he didn't drop that ball. He's got Hester and Hill and Harrison, if he ever really does want to let it fly. Luck will boogie to the sideline and get that first down. Got that escape artist. That helps, of course, a dashing dead eye too, if he wants to throw on the run. Pavin used the legendary Michael Vick to beat Jay in that club championship game. But here at the end of one, rolling with Andrew Luck, a 7-0 lead for Turbo Jeff. And I think he was using that Michael Vick for the speed. You know, he when I don't think everybody really knew how good dashing dead eye was. And it's not very much cap, honestly. It should probably be a little bit more cap because it is such a strong ability and allows you to do things that you just can't do with anyone else. And running with Pollard as we get back to live action. That's three carries, only nine yards for Pollard so far. Bobbin repping the Josh Jacobs jersey as he sits there. And kind of straight out of the Michael Skimbo playbook. Hardly ever gets even 40 rushing yards a game. He's looking to pass, and he can get greedy sometimes. He'll throw an interception or two along the way. Ooh. And underneath he goes again. That was a really good lurk by Jeff there. That should have probably been a pick six, honestly. He came down off of that post route and got down there so quick with Troy Palomalu. If Pavin would have just taken a second, he would have seen that post route coming wide open. Both these guys have Palomalu at their employ. A 7-0 game, third and four. Right around midfield, and luck looking. Good defense. Yep, nothing open yet. Luck will run, and he gets dragged down from behind. Lawrence Taylor got him. You don't want Lawrence Taylor getting too many touches on your quarterback. He will let that ball go. Luckily for Pavin, he holds on to it. Now he's out of fourth and one, where this is going to be a passing situation. I'm almost certain of it. Either that or her audible down, and it'll be so obvious that he's running the ball that Jeff should be able to stop it. Well, he just ran into a 10-time Pro Bowler from the Big Blue Wrecking Crew defense, Lawrence Taylor. So now, on a fourth down, one to go. And he's got Pollard over the right shoulder of Andrew Luck. It is going to be a pass, as predicted by my partner. He slings Ooh. it. It's caught. First down. A little bit of a, a 
tough throw there. You know, he held in there, though, and he lowballed that pass, so it got right underneath that linebacker. Really good poise by Pavin right there. He's got luck at 5 for 5, but Mo only 15 yards. <laughs> he has not gone downfield yet. Luckily, he still has the ball, though. He's still alive on this drive. And I don't like him wasting plays running the ball because it makes it that much more tough to pass when your opponent knows you're going to be passing. So he's got the slot apprentice on Marvin Harrison, and Pavin was finding him on corner routes all day long in that club championship final against Jay. It's like you're kind of waiting for something here to, to bubble up downfield. Nothing happening yet for Pavin. Second down and 12, though he did keep this drive alive on the fourth down. Corner out. Great play by Pavin. Oh, oh and Luck couldn't get rid of it. Just a little bit too long with the stick, and it's Champ Bailey. The Broncos great. Once a 99-rated Madden player back in his heyday. What a play. And I, I love the play call by Pavin, but it looks like he might just be a little bit nervous out there. His reads aren't as crisp as they were used to seeing. He had that dig route open the whole entire play, but then he waited too long to where he couldn't throw it because it was made it where Turbo Jeff could lurk both routes at one time. Just, just if you're Pavin, you got to just calm down, play your game. You're playing a little nervous right now. You're playing as a three-time club champion, a guy with 100,000 large in the bank from last year, but you, you're seeing nerves. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to call it so much nerves, whereas he's just not playing his best game right now. He, he had a guy wide open, and he waited too long and ends up taking a sack, whereas it, the... The Pavin from last year that won this tournament, he would have made that throw with confidence. He would have thrown it right on the break. There would have been no question about it. The Raiders have known no other champion besides oh. Pavin. That wall battered away. Delvin Smith got a hand on it. Boy, I tell you what, Turbo Jeff is ready. He, I mean, he's locked here. Yeah, and if I was Pavin, I would probably consider punting here because Turbo Jeff doesn't have any quarterback, so it's going to be tough to get big plays down the field. And he, you kind of almost guarantee that Turbo Jeff won't get points if you don't go for this. But Pavin, I'm telling you, I am sensing some nerves here because that was a really poor read. He didn't have any pressure, pressure coming to him. He would have had somebody coming op open because no one was going to get in on the pressure. Just, just a little bit nervous out there right now. Fourth and 14, and he will go. And he will sling in a Ooh. diving catch. You know Move those catch chains. Time. He threaded the needle. Wow, to keep this thing play going. Was bad. Really, really lucky play there by Pavin. His guy just missed the squat. Jeff got stuck on his defensive tackle, so he wasn't oh able to make God. any user play. And that's why Pavin just took like a, kind of a 50-50 chance right there and threw that dig route. Devin Devoris Hester. It seems like in every game we've watched today, Hester's made a big play for somebody. 127 left in the half. Luck standing uh -oh. like a statue. That ball yeah. batted oh. down and almost picked. Yeah, that should have been picked off again. Pavin's throwing a couple questionable reads on this drive. He's just not very patient. The pressure isn't coming to him, but he's just forcing a lot of passes for no reason. Fifth major for Pavin. Only 19 years old. And here on second and 10, he avoids the blitz. Dickerson, the tight end, gets whomped on. And again, we keep waiting for Luck to go downfield. Nine pass attempts, 30 total yards from Andrew Luck. Yeah, and I just want to touch on something. I don't love Turbo Jeff calling time out there because he's, there's only a minute left in half. You're almost never going to score with the offense that you have before halftime. Yeah. And you're giving your Pavin a chance to where he's able to get seven if he gets his first down. Whereas if you make Pavin burn this time out, you're kind of taking clock off for him. And you just made it, you just made it really easy on Pavin because if he converts his first down, he's going to control the game. Pavin hasn't turned it over yet. That's sometimes something that'll happen for him because he usually takes some chances. He'll take a chance here in the coverage. Oh, Caught! Touchdown! Oh, to tie God. it up! Hester comes away with it. And with an it's extra point, ball. it'll be seven up. Just a blown oh, coverage there by Jeff. He had a good defensive play, good defense played. He wasn't going to be able to guard that crosser himself anyways. He should have just stayed back on the on the one route that was going to beat you for a touchdown. Very, very questionable uh, choice of selection which route to guard but Pavin was just revving the engine the car wasn't getting down the track and Sanders spins away and then gets belted it's almost like he had a sense that it was just buffering for a while you know Mo I mean at, at some point he was going to find something yeah it, Turbo Jeff probably was going to give up a big play there regardless but you just don't want to give up the touchdown that was a free touchdown right there you don't want to get caught on that middle third safety on third and ten and remember that conversion on 4th and 14 to keep the drive alive. Johnson trying to stretch. Backwards he goes. 
And I'm really surprised we don't see Pavin take a timeout right here. Turbo Jeff can't pass the ball on the first the first set, the first play he runs, he loses four yards. If I was Pavin, I'd be trying to get the ball back right now. And if you're Turbo Jeff, I would be itching to take this game to halftime. That William Jackson card is showing up on a lot of rosters this week. He just made that play. Yeah, he's he's low cap and really really fast. So that's a theme that we like to that we see from a lot of top players is whenever a player is really fast and takes up less cap, you're going to see him often. Johnson, a little stutter step, taking the handoff from Drew Brees. And congratulations to Drew Brees, obviously. It's been a big week for him. Drew Brees had his career changed completely in a game against the Broncos. Tore up his shoulder trying to dive on a fumble caused in the end zone by the great John Lynch. Chargers got rid of him. Yada, yada, yada. He is a Saint superstar. 44 seconds left in this first half. We'll get you caught up soon enough, too, on Chargers and Chiefs. This should be a big play here. With Johnson. No, oh, he gets absolutely smoked instead. Couldn't turn it back inside. All right, fourth and three, and look where the field position is. The 28-yard line. you got to punt it away here. He's got to punt it away, and if Pavin's able to get points before half, it's all Turbo Jeff's fault because he burned that timeout on Pavin's drive. Then Pavin strikes, and then now Pavin's able to use his timeouts on defense. Just, just a... Poor decision there by Jeff when he was on defense. Kind of opens, opens himself up to this situation. But maybe he can get kind of fortunate and Pavin make a mistake here where he's able to get points himself. Clock management and roster construction, I know aren't two real sexy items, Mo, but it seems like they're, they're just huge in, in these majors. They're, those two things are the most important things in coming into a tournament. You can be the best player ever, but if you don't manage the clock well, you're going to fold. Andrew Luck gets... Yeah, does he get out of bounds? He does. With 27 seconds left. So are, are you getting greedy here if you're popping and trying to pop it all the way down, or are you going to just try to maneuver your way for three? If you're able to get a field goal here, that's a huge win for Pavin. But for Turbo Jeff, I think we're going to see him drop in coverage a lot, very often and just kind of prevent the big play. Andrew Luck on the move and oh, just gives up and fires it away. Pavin's favorite player is actually Derek Carr, but... When you've got the West Coast offense cooking, you want Andrew Luck, right? That or Steve Young. Yeah, it's, it's normally somebody with that escape artist, but with Andrew Luck, you can get that escape arting and dashing dead eyes. So that's, that, that's why we see that, that normally from this West Coast playbook. Once again, we'll get you an update on the other game from this division, but first over the middle, diving fingertip opportunity to catch Tyreek Hill, timeout. And if you're Turbo Jeff, that's fine. You don't want to give up that big of a play, but it's going to be really tough for Pavin to get down inbounds and still be able to kick this field goal. So all you have to do is, if you're Turbo Jeff is keep him inbounds right here. Guard those corners, right? Yeah, out of timeouts is Pavin. 15 seconds to go. You need, what, another seven or eight yards to get to the, the field goal opportunity? Yeah, you need about seven yards, and you need to be able to get out of bounds. It's going to be really tough for him, though. Sam Ficken, kind of a bargain basement kicker, is how Pavin is rolling in that regard. Now we'll see if it comes to that. Luck back. Luck looking. Throwing on the run with the dashing dead eye, and it's still incomplete. Nine seconds to go. And I wouldn't be surprised if Pavin's seen something there in Jeff's defense where he's able to take advantage of that one high safety and kind of hit him over the top for a touchdown right here. Because Jeff is going to be playing the sidelines, so that's gonna, that means he's going to be vulnerable to the up the, middle up, the, up the middle of the field. So I wouldn't be surprised if Pavin's able to, to bend that defense a bit here. He's got Tyree Kill tight to the right side. Of course, they run that streak. Look for, for Hester Tyreek. on the left. You like Hester? No, he's out and running with that X. Can they find him? Nope. With three seconds left in the half. Okay. LT having a big first half. And Josh, if he was able to buy some time there, I think he would have been able to hit Hester up the seam on the left. Very, very close, but luckily for Jeff, he was able to get in right there and sack the quarterback. A 7-7 tie at halftime. Turbo Jeff, with a clock-munching drive, had control early, but Pavin able to come back. As for what's happening with the Chargers and the Chiefs, Madden Elite and young Tony, let's get it over to Mr. Nick. Hey, thanks a lot, Josh. You guys got a great one going over here. We got ourselves an interesting game here between young Tony and Madden Elite, it was Tony able to jump on the board early. Yeah, it's really been all Tony all game so far. He's playing phenomenal defense. As you can see on this play right here, just nothing open for Madden Elite. Big sack. And Tony did have a costly turnover right before the half, but he's still up 10-0 right now. 
And this was the, the field goal that was able to extend it to 10 nothing. And for Matt and Elite, how does he get back into this? He's had trouble dealing with young Tony's pressure defensively. Yeah, he has. Tony's bringing eight every play. He's, he's bringing the house, and Matt Elite's got to be able to pick it up. He's got to throw. He has reads. We saw he's had some stuff open. He's just not hitting the right reads. He's got to open his eyes and make better reads. In your mind, how deep can young Tony go in this tournament? Oh, very deep. He's so talented. You just got to put it together and play smart, and I think he can go far for sure. Hey, well, don't forget, guys, 10 nothing at the half. You're going to be able to watch this game in its entirety. All the games here on the yeah. Madden Competitive Gaming YouTube channel. Don't miss out on that one. we got a great second half between Pavin and Turbo Jeff for that. Let's throw it back to Josh and Mo. Nick, thank you very much. Great job as always. And now Turbo Jeff and Pavin locked and loaded for the third quarter. And it'll be Hester from the goal line. And he takes a thumping right there. And if you're Pavin, you're thrilled that this game is 7-7. You played terrible on your first offensive drive and we're still able to get seven points very very lucky drive there jeff you're super disappointed because like i said he's going to be running the ball he's going to be using that clock and now he's in a position where if pavin scores he's going to be so uncomfortable for the rest of the game pollard trying to swivel inside trying to find something there in the b gap there's a flag down to anyone else, I'm accepting that, not the D lineman. I know how it would be. <laughs> and uh, so what happened right there is it was an offsides, but it wasn't Turbo Jeff's fault. So Pavin went and had to decline it. These guys are really good friends. The they didn't they didn't prepare with each other for this tournament because they knew they'd have to play each other. But these guys are really good friends. So that's why you see the sportsmanship being shown right I there. I love that. Love it. Just shrug it off and let, let's play for real here on second and eight. Luck looking. Luck firing Tyree Kill, and he hangs on, gets dragged out of bounds as Pavin tries to get downfield and take his first lead of this match. I'm not in love with the defense Turbo Jeff's playing. He keeps controlling this deep third, and Pavin's kind of taking advantage of that. He's realized what Turbo Jeff's doing now. If you're Jeff, you got to switch it up a little bit. It's getting a little too obvious. The lifelong Raiders fan Pavin to Pollard with a burst towards the sideline. Move those chains. Remember, Pavin, a pass-first guy, usually. 186 yards a game on average, one of the top three figures of the remaining players here. But he popped it with Pollard, and it paid off for Pavin. He's got him. Luck launching right near the pylon. They kicked the pylon on. over, and Tyree Come Kill, on. the call's going to be first and goal at the one. Pavin almost ruined that for himself. He passed led that outside. Lucky, luckily, he wasn't called out of bounds right there. Call him down at the one-yard line. Likely going to score a touchdown here. Great play by Pavin. Pavin hardly ever runs it in for a score, but I guess if ever it would be here, right? I mean, he's basically a foot away. Probably going to see a, a fullback dive here to Pollard. It is Pollard. It is in there. It is a touchdown. Mark one time. Come on. And I love that audible that he just used. I think we might be seeing some people steal that for the rest of the tournament. He audibled from goal line to that near formation and kind of was able to snap it while guys were still motioning around. Really, really neat audible right Let's there. Let one of these runners fumble one time. One time, let him fumble. Mo, how much copy and paste is there? You just mentioned talking about kind of stealing from, from a playbook. He sees something go well. I mean, these guys were all watching what's happening, right? Yeah, everybody's just trying to do what's best in the game, you know what I mean? So if, if that's the best way to score at the one-yard line, that's what we're going to see from all these competitors. And Pavin, usually not all that emotional, right? But we, we heard him bark. Yeah, and I, I think that's because, you know, that first drive really didn't go the way he expected it to go. You know, he, he played pretty nervous. He made a lot of questionable reads, but was still able to get seven. And now he's completely driving this game. But Johnson will take it to the edge and cut back inside. He'll zigzag. And a big gainer yeah. for Chris Johnson. And what I noticed right there is Pavin was not comfortable versus whatever formation that Jeff was just in. So if I was Jeff, I would come straight back out in that formation, not a formation Pavin's used to seeing. Just kind of make him uncomfortable, and that's how you're able to get big gains with your running back. Remember, Turbo Jeff knocked out by Pavin last year in the round of 16. Pavin now wearing the point total he had against him, as a matter of fact, wearing 28. And a stacked AFC West trying to move on to get the winner of Chargers and Chiefs. Johnson, a big crushing hit right on him. You know, you've seen 10 rushes for 110 yards, and you'd think that Turbo Jeff's winning this game. Right. I don't understand why he switched formations, went back to that I-type formation when he clearly found something in that weak formation. Just 
Stuff like that is how you lose Madden tournaments. You know, you got to stay consistent. Once you find something that makes your opponent uncomfortable, continue to go back to the well. 14-7 game, 2.22 to go. And there's that point total we referenced from their last get-together. 28 put on the board by Pavin. He's halfway there, and he's got the lead this time. Going to see stretch left here. Good call, baby. To the outside it goes. Johnson right at the first down marker. And he probably would have got the first down, but he got a little too cute right there on the outside. Shaq Griffin wouldn't have been able to catch Chris Johnson anyways. You don't need to try to stop and go him. Just get to that first down marker. Keep your drive going. So inches away, essentially two shots at it here, right? Third down and less than a foot. The issue is I think Pavin might have defense for this halfback dive, and when it's third and inches, that's the run that you expect to see. James Devlin, a fullback, and Chris Johnson, a running back, able to be put out there by Turbo Jeff, who's been a consistent scorer, somewhere between 19 and 28 every game so far of the five he's played in this major. But right now being held to seven by Pavin. They give it to the linebacker, Smith, and he gets stuffed. Yeah, I don't love that call at all right there. You know, like... <laughs> I have no other way to put it. That was a really bad call right there. You know, third and inches. Give the ball to Chris Johnson. What are you do, give, doing giving the ball to your middle linebacker? And you can't go back and get Bo Jackson from a week and a half ago. You're going to ride with Chris Johnson and now on fourth and inches. Now you're just in a really uncomfortable situation where you're hoping a dice roll goes your way. Once again, using a linebacker as a fullback here. You see Pat Tillman creeping up from safety. With under a minute to go third quarter. And oh, Johnson oh, will oh, not get there. And that's why you can't take plays off on, on offense. Third and inches, you're getting cute, giving the ball to the linebacker. You were in that goal line formation. You need to give the ball to your running back. He's going to be able to get in space. Just a very, very questionable call there by Jeff, and it might cost him this tournament. And you put it out there earlier, Mo. I mean, when you're facing an opponent like Pavin, as Pollard will swerve and go forward oh. and get seven or so, you just can't afford to make a mistake, let alone multiple mistakes. Yeah, that, that third and inches call was, you know, he should have had the first down, but he tried to get cute with Shaq Griffin, gets to third and inches, and then he hands the ball off to his middle linebacker on third and inches. Just makes it really difficult on yourself to play perfect on those fourth downs. And, you know, I don't like seeing a stretch call on inches, but, you know, that's, the, that's what he thought would be open. But it, that's, what, that's the issue is you can lose yardage on stretch so easily. Pavin, a lifelong Raiders fan. His dad had moved to the Oakland area from India around 1990. Fell in love with the team as soon as they moved back from L.A. in the mid-90s. Now, of course, the Raiders are on the move again to Vegas. Late stages, third quarter. Pollard has that seam and has that first down. Taylor hit him hard, but only after that first down. He is in the bag, and we are at the end of three now, partner. It's a good one. Young Tony, by the way, is up 10 to 7 in the fourth quarter. We will have highlights of Madden Elite and Young Tony. Chargers and Chiefs having at it. That's the other side of this bracket. We've got our fours up, heading for the final five minutes here at Pizza Hut Stadium. Pollard. That's 10 times that Pollard has been asked to carry the mail here for the Raiders. If I was Turbo Jeff, I would stack this box. I would get out of this big dime defense, no matter what Pavin comes out in. I would come out in a 3-4 formation and bring one of those safeties in the box because you cannot afford to give up another yard. Pavin will be in field goal range, and this game will be essentially over. You need to get out of this defense because Pavin's just going to audible down to get a couple yards anyways. And if you ever had a takeaway in you, this is the time. Ooh, Pollard on a heavy hit again, LT right there. So now a third and eight. Third and eight, but I think Pavin realizes that he's right on the cusp of field goal range if he's not already in field goal range. So he's just going to not take a chance at losing yardage here. I wouldn't be surprised to see another run here by Pavin, even though he is a pass-heavy player and he could try to end the game here by getting the first down. I would, wouldn't be surprised because Turbo Jeff doesn't have that high-powered offense. He doesn't have any wide receivers out there. Wouldn't be surprised to see a run here. Sam Ficken is his kicker, by the way. One of those bargain basement kind of guys. It's not like he's got Graham Gano or Justin Tucker. Under four minutes left in the fourth. Here's a big third and eight. You need to stop him in the backfield here. 
Play aggressive right here. Get him out of field goal range if you can. No, no gain and okay, so now what? He can make this field goal, but he's got to kick it perfectly. That's a huge play in the backfield there to make sure there's not, I mean, because you're right, even four or five yards, you feel good about a field goal there, and now you're kind of a coin toss. All right, Sam Ficken, what you got? A 53-yard attempt. Perfect, he's not going to be able to block it. He should make this kick. Which would make it a two-possession game, and he'll very smartly take that play clock down. He'll kick it with about 310 left in regulation. And this thing might hinge on a kick right here. On the way. Enough leg. It is up and in. 17 to 7. And now you got to go on attack mode, right? I mean, because you need two scores. The problem is he doesn't have any wide receivers out there, so he's still going to have to run the ball and just hope he gets a big play. We won't see any passes right here. I know this is a situation where it doesn't make any sense not to pass the ball, but he just simply doesn't have the offensive firepower to pass the ball. He has no wide receivers. His quarterback's a 70 overall. He's going to have to run the ball. And it's so funny to figure that Drew Brees can't help him here, but we're talking about, you're right, a, a 70 grade. Even if it was the very best version of Drew Brees, I mean, you, you put a, a porterhouse steak on a paper plate here. You got no receivers. Well, yeah, let's. This is this is Drew Brees playing with his torn shoulder when he played for the right. Chargers. You know right. what I mean? So that that that's how you can look at it. There's he just isn't able to do anything with them. He's gonna have to run the ball. What a weird stat though. Zero passing yards from Drew Brees. And Johnson scurries outside. Of course, the clock becomes a big deal now too. You don't need the touchdown, right? I mean, just get it down far enough to kick that field goal because you need points here. You, you need it twice. This is the problem you run into when you don't have a quarterback and wide receivers out there. You know, you have to control the game. Otherwise, you just have no chance in situations like this. Whereas if you were playing Pavin and Pavin was down 17 to seven in this situation, he would still have a fighting chance because he's a high level passer. He's got to run the ball here. You know, it's so predictable what you're going to do. And it's just hard to score a quick touchdown when you have to do this. Running against Tillman and Palomalu too, by the way. On a third and six, predictably, the run play and not quite enough. Tick, 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 tick. And if you're Jeff, you almost have to score on this play or, or the game's just essentially over because the clock's just going to con continue to dwindle on you. By the way, it could be that young Tony is moving on for the Chiefs. We'll update you there, but he's just taking a little larger lead. That could be an interesting final in the AFC West if it goes that way. A necessary first down. This one's not over quite yet. You got the two-minute warning, got three timeouts, but again, you need two scores. I know he only picked up five or six yards right there, but that was his chance. He was one-on-one -on -one with the safety, just couldn't make a miss. That was his chance right there to break free. Well, there is a defending champion, and they have a Madden championship. Won by the Raiders is wholly appropriate. Madden, of course, was a longtime Raiders coach before he became a TV star and video game icon. Two minutes to go, and down 10. Johnson angling forward, but these chunks of four, five, and six are, are not going to do it, right? Yeah, it's going to put him in a situation where he's going to need an onside kick. Even though we see those three timeouts, he's going to have to make use of those here shortly. No passes, all runs. It's the anti-Pavin playbook. It's got to be this play. you got to get a big chunk here. Johnson turns the corner, and on the first down line, he has wrestled out of bounds. So at least these run plays, if he gets to the outside and gets out of bounds, right, at least the clock stops. Yeah, but the problem is he's still not in field goal range. If he was in field goal range right now, I almost would guarantee that he'd kick the field goal. So I, he, has to, he has to score a touchdown, get out of bounds, or kick a field goal on this very next play. That's a lot to ask, to take down the defending champion and never throw a pass. I mean, you're going to have to run, 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 and you're doing it against that Miami defense with Tillman and Palomalu and Shazier. We've got Cameron Wake. We're going to see another stretch left here. Just waiting for Johnson to finally pop one one of these times. Uh oh he might have him. Oh, Bumping his way right instead, and nothing there in the gap. Looked like Pavin clicked off right there, and his guy just kind of dashed toward the middle, but it didn't matter. He was able to get the block shed there anyways. We take it down towards a minute to go. It's a second and nine. Johnson does have a little bit of a seam, but they close in on him pretty quickly. 
See, that's a pl that's a mistake that a lot of players use or do. They don't call their timeouts in situations like this. Very smart by Jeff to call these timeouts because it's only his only chance at winning if it, is if he uses those timeouts. A lot of people just let that clock go all the way down and try to preserve those timeouts, making it where they don't even matter anymore at that point. I love that Jeff used his timeouts right there. Still not in field goal range yet. Still not putting the ball in the air, even though Drew Brees, he of the 540 career touchdowns, is the quarterback. Johnson has the first down and has the edge. Oh, but he can't get out of bounds. And he's not in field goal range. Well, that's a double whammy right there. Had he gotten out of bounds, you're thinking, okay, maybe there's something there. But we're down to 58 seconds to go. And one more play and kick the long field goal? I mean, is that what would, you got to do? I would probably run a dive here and call my timeout. I think that gives you the best chance because... You, you know, you're not going to have any timeouts, but you're almost asking it. You're going to have to get lucky anyways with the onside kick. So I would try to just get the field goal after this play. Use that last timeout. I know it hurts to do it, but I think that gives you the best chance at winning. Only one timeout left. Down 10 against the defending champion. And Turbo Jeff out of Medford, Massachusetts. And now there will be an opportunity for Breeze finally to He's put it him. in the air. He's got uh -oh. his man! Wow! It, was it actually held on to, though? Oh, my God. He dropped it. And that's, he, he used a linebacker out there who's not used to catching a football, and it costs you. Great call there by Jeff. You know, I probably would have wanted to go to that a little bit earlier, though. But, his, you know, he has a linebacker there, and he's not able to make that catch. Well, that's your ball game. I mean, that would have been something to call a Telvin Smith 40-odd-yard touchdown to get back in the game. But he dropped it open in the end zone. And now Chris Johnson is seeking the edge. He's going to have to step out of bounds, and you've got to take your points here, right? We're going to see a field goal here, I would hope. Boy, you talk about a what if. If, if a guy who's not used to catching the football catches the football, you've got 17-14 with an onside kick coming. Yeah, and I, it looks like he's going to go for this, and it really makes no sense to go for it here. I agree, because you need double points, right? Yeah, you I mean, need an onside kick anyways, like... Even, even if you score on this play, like you're not giving yourself that much better of a chance to win the game anyways. And Chris Johnson, the, the needle's got to be close to empty now anyway, right? He's rushed it close to 20 times. Fourth down, four to go, and here's your ball game with 26 seconds to go. Johnson, can he get there? No! And Pavin is going to move on. Boy, Turbo Jeff got the jump on him, Mo. Led 7-0. But Pavin... Still a teenager, by the way. He's savvy. He figured it out. Yeah, you know, if you're Turbo Jeff, that's all you ever want is to score on that first drive when you're in that really, you got a really good defense on the other side of the ball. But then Pavin comes right back and scores. Makes it really tough on you to continue to listlessly play good offense when you don't have anybody out there except for that running back. 17-7, the final here. Let's take a peek at what happened in the other game in the AFC West.